attacks the eryth erythropoietin in the blood, in the bone marrow, which makes red blood cell. What it does, it decreases the red blood cell production. And when you decrease the red blood cell production, you also decrease your hemoglobin, and a lot of body functions go down with that, including a rise in high blood pressure, kidney failure, and so on. These are the results that I find that have been reversed after the patient is on ambush for three weeks. Another function is their sexual appetite, because then most of my patients have been, have been within the age of 19 and say 47, 50. And uh, sexual appetite increases from 0 to 10 in just as much as the three weeks. Because before, before treatment, they were so weak, nothing could happen. Now after treatment, and anything is possible. I have looked at lipodystrophy in people with HIV AIDS. Lipodystrophy is where the fat changes and moves to a different part of the body that it is not needed. Like the gluteal muscles. After taking ambush, the gluteal muscles starting to rise again. And on the other hand, there's a decrease, marked decrease to normalcy of the buffalo hump. The buffalo hump is a big hump at the back of the neck that comes all over, in which it's just one big layer of fat. Whereas it should have been here, the body now puts it here. Once you take ambush, it changes the hump from here to normal, and you start, the women start regaining their gluteal muscles. Um, in later stages of AIDS, I find that the people have a lot of pain. And with this pain, it's usually pain in the joints, can't walk, can't bend, can't walk up hills. Now I find that after they have taken ambush for three weeks. Then the pain slowly goes away to zero. Because then I would have one patient, and he, um, he's a pastor, and um, he claims that his pain level would be a nine or a ten. Therefore, he would have to be on Vicodin and Tylenol number three, and so on. But once he had taken the ambush for the first two weeks, then the pain drops from a 10 to a 2 or a 3. After he's taken the second bottle, I haven't heard from him. Because, as one of my patients said, they can now walk up steps, they can bend, they can do things that they never were never able to do. All right. We'll move on to another um, indication, and that is dementia or end stage. We just read from a secular magazine that HIV attacks the brain and it sits in the brain. And your heart drugs or the heart drugs cannot affect or attack this pool in the brain. Secondly, what it does, it prevents new brain cells from being remade. Then one wonders, why are there so many loony looking people on the streets of Washington? It's not that they are loony. There's a distinct medical condition. It's called AIDS. And it needs to be addressed. It's not that they're crazy is that they need something for the pain. They need something for the feelings or some crack, some cocaine, anything to get that pain away. What they're suffering from is HIV AIDS. Dementia, as I said, there is a pool of virus in the brain in which cannot be 
completely removed. I said to the Almighty, so what are we going to do about this pool? And God said, they have to come to me to get rid of the dementia. We are now in the era and age of compelling people to come to Christ. And if this is one of his way, this is one of his way. You have to go to him for him to heal dementia. And he said to me yesterday, in Matthew 17, verse 17, the disciples couldn't heal a boy who had epilepsy. Epilepsy or fits is one in which there's a disorder of the brain that causes him to have, which causes him to be thrown into the fire, into water. And Jesus Christ said, bring him here to me. So when the Almighty God is saying, the people have to come to him for healing for the brain, yet he's giving us this for healing for the body. So if you want to bring and, and body heal, give him your life, he heals the brain, take some ambush, that heals the body. I asked him the question, Lord, why ambush? And he said, I'm giving you ambush to prove that there is a God in heaven. I'm like, shouldn't it be to say that you can cure AIDS? No. He made us so he can cure any AIDS. He can cure any disease. But people don't know that there is a God in heaven. And so this is to prove that there is a God in heaven. In which the scientific community are requested to acknowledge such. And this is, when you request anything, it is not a mere ask. The God of the universe does not merely ask. He demands. Secondly, this is God's intervention for mankind because the HIV virus will move from one red blood species to the next, to the next. All right, what do I mean by that? There is dogs catching HIV. There is cats catching HIV. They call it feline HIV. There is cows catching HIV with the mad cow disease. And the list goes on. So any red blooded, warm blooded animal, bird flu, is another form of the virus changing to fit the DNA of the species. In my um, in my patent, he showed me where the virus even attacks certain trees and kills them. So, because of its ability to mutate to any species. So, God says, there, he has got to intervene because there is no way we humans can figure this out. Because it has taken us 20 years it has taken us 26 years or whatever to come up with the heart therapy, ARVs. And yet we have no cure. So unless he intervenes and gives us a solution, the earth is doomed to shut down before it's time. So God is intervening. He intervenes because he made us and not we ourselves. So, he can fix us. All right, a little bit about my training. I've been doing this talks with the Almighty for the last five years. So I've gotten instructions, and my instructions, like in the result stages, are after I have seen the result, I say, Lord, explain the result to me. 
when he explains the result to me, I go into the scientific literature and it is all there. Anything that he has told me, and this is just a snaps, it's in there. He has also given me an eye for HIV. What I mean by eye for HIV is that I can look at an individual and say, that one has, that one doesn't. Therefore, you wonder when somebody comes to me and says, I want this, some ambush. How do I know that they are talking the truth? Look in their eyes. And I can tell yes or no. Sometimes they come for somebody else. But they will tell you that. 